and welcome back to Cold Waters, where I've been getting stuck into the campaign. Now, I'm quite a long way in, and I'm just about to head off to Trondheim because I need to intercept a Russian submarine which is taking some Spetsnaz commandos down there. When I say I'm quite a long way into this campaign, um, something that's happened during the time, you can see we're p picking up contacts here, we have these blue planes are NATO uh, P3 Orions, probably, that's probably a target coming my way there, that's Marine Contact. These blue lines are SOSUS lines and they are NATO's early warning in a naval sense. So it's just a load of sonar sets basically along the bottom of the ocean. So we can hear whenever the Russians come out of the box they've got at the top of the uh, top of the continent. So here we go, someone's bumped into us. At bearing 40, moderate surface duct wheat thermal layer. This is going to be our set of customers. So, that's a rig for ultra quiet. Good God, we're shallow here. Let's go down a bit. Where's my contact? Oh, two contacts. That'll do. Got this little reference book now that we're in patch uh, 1.3 I think. Well, let's try and line up submarines we're looking for, probably little diesel subs. I say little. Short range. So we got a Foxtrot. Yep, that's an old diesel sub. What's our second contact? Not one of those. I don't end up on getting stuck on the bottom here. And a Victor might be a Victor. There's three marks of Victor, so could be one of them. Let's get beneath this layer and start listening in. Now, obviously, what pops up on here on the map and in the 3D models is representation of the data that I'm getting in through the sonar so they're not necessarily there they might be considerably closer ooh Victor 1 is cavitating eh we just got pinged a little bit now is he pinging because he's clearing the way for the foxtrot or is he pinging because he's somehow heard me hard to tell He's quite a long way off. Let's just wing it for now. If he launches a torpedo at me, what I'm going to do is send a torpedo back at him and then run away. Evade the torpedo he sends at me and then uh, we'll try and re-establish contact after that. And the Foxtrot, what have we got? We're up to 35% on the Foxtrot, 37% on the Victor. Do a bit of a, a circle. We come round and we'll try and uh, establish, try and get some uh, sonar data in from a slightly different position so we can do a bit of trigonometry to work out the distances a bit better. When I was saying that this is quite a way into the campaign, I did record all of the rest of the campaign. The first time I did it, I did about three missions in a row and it recorded no sound whatsoever from the mic or the headset. And then, the second time I did it, I thought I'd solved that problem, and I had, but OBS decided to record two tracks of the mic sound and the game sound combined, and you can't really hear enough to tell what's going on either way, which is just great. So here we are at try number three. So broadly speaking, the campaign's going pretty well. 
I've only been detected once and that's when a Udaloy and another, I think it might have been a Cashin, bumped into me and uh, gave me a bit of the RBU treatment and I couldn't quite get away but I sank them both. We've actually sunk quite a lot of tonnage so far. So I'm learning the ropes. Let's see if we can't get deeper as well. Deeper means better sonar. I might put together, I've still got the footage from a lot of that uh, total failure, so I might put some of it together as a kind of fail comp compilation. It's good stuff. You just uh, can't hear anything. <laughs> Lost the foxtrot. We'll just wait for the uh, tow array to come round. I think. And we're getting increasing info on the Victor. He's not pinging us anymore, which is nice of him. Let's just do a bit of time compression. Now we're not really building up a better picture. We are slowly. Oh, more pingage. It could be that the foxtrot is above the layer. And that's why I can't quite pick him up. Or I could pick him up earlier when I was a bit higher up. Mm. Let's do another turn because we're not really not getting much information here. Let's speed things up again. Aha, there's the victor. What have we got for you? 71%. Oh. And he's doing less than 26 knots. That's pretty interesting of him. Let's just sidle along like this for a little while. Oh, yeah, there we go. There he is. He's looking our way. Stand by to fire a torpedo. He might just be zigzagging in our direction. And we're thinking it's a Victor 1. Yeah, the sonar plot hasn't cleared that up any for us. He doesn't have bad sonar. Quite modern, I think, the Victor. One, but they go up to Victor 3 as well, so... One of the issues I've got here is that if he detects me, his Foxtrot buddy, who I assume is actually carrying the commandos towards Trondheim, the one that the guy I actually need to do to uh, actually... I'm Yeah, come on. The guy I'm actually here to sink He might get through, he might get past me, or he might sink me, so I'm a little bit reluctant to engage until I've really found the Foxtrot as well. But if Victor wants to turn away, no he's turning back now. Sonar suddenly thinks he's a lot closer. Yes, so that could be just because he's done that bit of a turn. Yeah, we sort of lost him now. Okay, let's see if we 
can't go a little bit deeper. Let's see if we can't re-establish. I kind of want to stay a bit bow onto him so I can reduce my sonar profile. But the active sonar, obviously a smaller target means a smaller return. as shallow as I can afford to go. In fact, we should be kind of worried about hitting this little rise in front of us. That's going to reduce his uh, sonar effectiveness, effectiveness of his active sonar quite substantially. Because obviously he's uh, going to get returns from the ground as well. Or the seabed. Still no more fix on Mr. Foxtrot. Which is bad. Let's see how this pans out. Still standing by with the torpedoes. Yeah, there he is again. That's our guy. Still a fair way off. Thinks the sonar team. Ah, hello, Foxtrot. You might be back. Now, I kind of need to change direction a little bit so I can start getting another plot on the go. The downside is that I'm like directly in front of these people directly in front of them so if I turn to change direction and go broadside on I'm gonna he's gonna start getting a return off his sonar and oh shit the foxtrot is pinging as well the big question is are they pinging because they think something's here or are they just pinging because Russians like active pinging let's have a bit of a change of direction Getting closer all the time. And they're not firing torpedoes at us, but ideally, I want to be behind them. That's the best attack position because uh, I'd be in their baffles, as it were. Obviously, submarines have a great big propeller on the back, and that royally screws up your sonar. So if you get behind a submarine, you can't really see, they can't really see you. And if you get a torpedo up their baffles, chances are they're not going to detect it until it's far too late. And oh, that was loud. Ah, oh, that's because I was on the victor. Yeah. Ugh, oh, I remind myself not to do that. So, yeah, now we're in Victor's baffles. He's turning away. I don't know why. He doesn't seem very smart. Or it could be just be that he knows something is out here and he's trying to get a slightly different bearing on it. I don't know. I mean, I've got a good 95% solution on him, so I could fire a torpedo. That's probably exactly where he is. The Foxtrot, though, is the one that I'd consider the target. It's a very quiet sub, according to the reference book, but I'm even quieter. Just really waiting for the situation to clear up some. Foxtrot. Victor's going around in circles. That's interesting. You know, I wouldn't describe myself as an expert. Let's come right a little bit again. I wouldn't consider myself an expert in submarine tactics. So I can't tell you if that's some kind of uh, genius Russian move or some kind of AI bug.
can tell you is that I really, really need to sort out a solution for that Foxtrot sooner rather than later. We've got a bit more depth to work with, let's go down a bit more. Yeah, they got to come past me to get into the fjord. range on that foxtrot. One of the issues here is that if the fox the foxtrot is much closer than the victor, so if the victor is pinging me, the victor might not be able to pick me up, but the foxtrot might do. Because the reflection, the reflected sound, the echo from the sonar coming off me might not reach victor, but it might reach foxtrot. So we might be seeing a little bit of cooperation here. And oh, it looks like Victor's finished doing his loop-de-loop. -loop. Of course, one option here could be to just fire off a torpedo and see what happens. It's a pretty legit option. Moderately sure that they haven't detected me. Yeah, Victor, we got the, the solution back for about the Foxtrot. Eh, Foxtrot's lurking around 35 ish. I wouldn't expect him. Yeah, now we're soliding up a lot closer. Just right bang in front of us, which is great. We really need to know how close this bastard is. If I can ping him, well, I don't think it would end well. Alright, let's do a, a dog leg. Let's go 90 degrees from here to the left, start heading fairly north again, and we'll see if we better fix on Mr. Foxtrot. Hopefully that's going to close down the angle for the active pings coming in to boot Victor's loop to loop thing again. And we've lost him. Still, Foxtrot, bingo, bingo, Mr. Foxtrot. Right, let's go a little bit deeper. We can afford to go a bit deeper. Is he picking us up? I don't know. He's going very slow. There he is, much older boat. And oh no, Victor launched the top. So. You can have a torp, and you can have a torp, and we'll drop a noisemaker, and run the hell away. Yeah, they're both dropped torps now. One thing we can do is... Fire off decoy. Off that goes. Oh, apparently my propulsion is still damaged from earlier. That's fantastic. So I can only do 20 knots. The plus side, it's going to be really quiet. The downside, this could be coins. So Victor's heard the top, he's running away. Foxtrot has heard it, he's also running away. Oh, this could get very messy very quickly. I 
I can't see Foxtrot now because he's in my baffles, but he's still picking away. All the torpedoes out there are now very much alive and kicking. I lost the wires, so they might acquire me if I'm unlucky. One problem I've got here is that I'm in the middle of a V, so normally I could spread out a little bit. Oh, we caught the Foxtrot again, sort of. You know, I could um, run at 90 degrees to one torpedo and try and... Oh yes, our torpedo there has picked him up, apparently. I could run at 90 degrees to one top and have a pretty good chance of avoiding it, but here, not so much. Especially going around at about 10 knots, Jesus. I don't think we can fix that. Oh, not till we get back to uh, Holy Lock, anyway. Let's hope those bastards go for the... Uh, go for the decoy. Get torps. That's an enemy torp over there. Let's see if we can't get any lower. Yeah, that's an enemy torpedo starting to. starting to do it seek thing. see what kind of course it's on. So yeah, it looks like the Foxtrot's torpedo is on a snaking course and it might have just about gone past us. Victor's torpedo is in a circular search pattern just ahead of us. We're now getting pinged a little bit by Foxtrot's torp. Mm. My torp's locked onto something. That's Ivan's, that's mine. No idea what it's going after. Well, I know it's going after the Victor, but I have no idea where he is. Let's see if we can't do a hard left turn here. Let's see if we can't re-establish contact with that Victor, get a better idea of what's going on. He hasn't fired any more torps at me. That's, uh, that's a plus. The tops that have come up are pretty much missed. They're not going to hit me. Victor is still pinging away though. Russians. Russians and the bloody act of sonar. Of course, I could start pinging as well, but it's not really going to uh, help me very much. I'm going to give my position away. Oh, yep. Our uh, Ivan's torps, Ivan's one of mine, right? Definitely right up that Victor's bum here. He just dropped a noisemaker off. That's confused my torps, so he's gone into search mode. Victor is definitely up there. It's a long way away now, though. I might be able to just about disengage. Try and keep an eye on the C4. Because I don't want to be. Aha! There's Victor. Oh, he was coming back. Poor life choice, mate. So yeah, we just have these torpedoes to worry about, and I don't think we need to worry about them very much. Let's speed up. 
up, so. No, 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 up, 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 not down, not down. God. Don't want to be doing that. away from all this stuff, a bit more time compression. Yeah, there's weapons nearby so we can't disengage yet, even though we're done. So, we tried to be sneaky and they got the first shot off, but managed to sink them anyway. Not a very good position tactically, they're both coming, sh both were coming straight at me, so. Maybe I could have manoeuvred a little bit and ended up on a flank or behind them. Not convinced. Okay, there we go. Yeah, leave combat. Sank a victor, sank a fox dropped. My propulsion system is still damaged. Yep. Okay, those were the guys transporting the Spetsnaz commandos. That's good. We get a little bit of news. Soviet subs attempted an incursion near Trondheim, but have been destroyed or driven off. Right, so this is all feeding into the larger picture of the campaign, the Battle of the Atlantic. If we can keep our Norwegian bases, then we're doing good because we're going to be able to help intercept, or well, that's going to help us intercept Russian naval forces coming out of the Arctic, coming out of uh, Murmansk and the other one I, pr I can't pronounce. The Northern Fleet, the Polar Fleet, coming down and hitting the supply lines across the Atlantic. And we've got our next mission. Satellite recon has spotted enemy cruise missile submarines and several, ooh, several eh, attack submarines preparing to sail. Right, but I'm going back to Holy Lock for a little bit. So I've got enemy cruise missile submarines and some attack submarines. They're going to be sailing out of uh, the Soviet Union up here and trying to break out into the North Atlantic. But as you can see, oop, a little bit of a war update. Norway! Oh no! Russians are attacking Norway. You know, they're heading for Andoya. That's going to be bad news because I'm relying here on that Sosus line there between Andoya and Spitsbergen to give me early warning of those enemy submarines coming up. Yep, there we go. End of this patrol. Seven days of war. Four missions accomplished. Two warships sunk. Six submarines sunk. One merchant. That was a Don. Submarine tender total tonnage sunk at 38 and a half thousand tons. That'll do. So let's rearm and repair. We need to repair that propulsion. And we had better load up with torpedoes again. Let's take some harpoons out. One salvo of harpoons and then we'll. Oh, that's a different one. I haven't seen that one. We're gaining ground in West Germany. Cool, we're having a bit of a counterattack. Excellent. Some uh, Russians there in some kind of ludicrous firefight. Cool. I'm done. Hours and ports. Come on. Yeah, there we go. All systems fully operational. Let's get back out there. We've got some submarines to intercept. The question now is which line do I hide behind? Obviously there's Russian surface forces there lurking in the Norwegian Sea. Ooh, more news. Norway's free again. Yay! We've recaptured the chunk of Norway that the Russians took. 
I can't remember how long I think I've been in port for a few days. I don't know if those Russian submarines I'm supposed to be intercepting have come out of port. So I'm going to lurk behind the Spitsberg and Andoya Sosis line. But wait, further search deemed unproductive. Wait additional orders. Okay, so they might have gotten past there while we're in port, but you know, if I can only do 10 knots, I can't fight very effectively. I can't invade. But yeah, looks like the Russians got through and they've been sinking stuff. Anyway, new orders. Intelligence has discerned a pattern to movements of enemy at sea replenishment. Ah, so I have to summon replenishment. At sea replenishment tankers. Or tenders. Excellent. This is going to come out of Murmansk and rendezvous somewhere in the Barents Sea. It's our job to sink it. We can do that. Yeah, let's go. The Barents Sea. So let's uh, get towards Murmansk and the satellite flying over. Now we've got Russian anti-submarine warfare patrols hanging around here. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, fuck off, fuck off. Oh wait, no, I'm after surface vessels again, aren't I? Duh, come on. Yeah, there we go. Hopefully this is what I'm after. And it's not an anti-surface uh, warfare, hmm. anti-submarine warfare flotilla. So what have we got? Bearing 44. Weak surface duct, weak thermal layer. Lots of depth to work with. Let's go silent. Bearing 66, so we're expecting stuff to be off that way. Can't hear anything right now. Oh, we don't have a lot of depth to work with. Slowing down to silent running, and we'll see what we can pick up. The time compression again. Come on, let's go. Expecting them to be off here somewhere, bearing 66, it said. Bingo, there we go. A bit of pinging. So let's start with contact number one. You are not a whale, you're something else. Might be a submarine. They could have been refueling or re ammunitioning the submarines out here. But it might be a Grisha looking at that. That's bad. That's a dedicated uh, anti submarine do what? What else have we got? A Kazbek. What's a Kazbek? A tanker of some description. You'll do. We'll have you. Then S3, you're likely to be another escort, aren't you? Not going to be a Kirov or anything like that. Lost contact with that creature, that's okay. Oh, it might be another uh, tender type ship. In which case, awesome. Quick run through the submarines. No. It's one of these, I just can't find the right one. A no. It's not going to be a, sp a Sverdlov cruiser, Jesus. Surely, surely that's wrong. I mean, if it's not, then awesome. Because we'd really like to sink one of those. It's got no uh, no anti-submarine gubbins on it. It's got no sonar even, so hmm. that's very interesting. Let's start zigzagging our way in. Okay, let's start working that trigonometry. See if they're heading this way or they're just uh, no other contacts. I can work, work with those three pretty easy. Bit of pinging, but we should be good. Oh, new contacts here are four. 
you've got to be a proper anti-submarine escort. I mean, they're not going to send a spurt lob out there. Cash in. Yeah, it could be a cash in. That's a different barrel of fish entirely. Right, so the Grisha is a problem because he has um, a towed array sonar, so he can tow, he can stream his towed array underneath the layer, which is a problem. And also, because we have this weak duct, a lot of the sound coming off those ships up there is going to be bouncing off. Well, I say a lot, it's a weak layer. Some of the sound is going to be bouncing off and travelling quite far, you know, bouncing between the uh, level of the uh, sea surface and um, and the layer, so some of the distances I might have for these ships might be totally off. But looks like they are kind of heading our way, which is great. We're in their way again. I don't want to be in their way. Let's see if we can't. heading away a little bit. We don't have any particularly good... Yeah, we're resolving the Kazbek pretty well. That's our main target here. The Kashin's popping up. And yeah, it definitely looks like it's a, a Sverdlov. I'm not going to be able to pronounce that. Yeah, night. We've got an 86 track on the. Yeah, and we've got the Grisha as well. Okay. Okay. If they go over me here, how far out is that Grisha? Well, the Kazbek. Where's the Kazbek? That's 9.5 out. Right. Let's turn around. And what I want to do is be behind them. That's the best possible position for me to be in here. So let's try and move away a bit. We've got a good track on the Grisha now. He's very close. I mean, he's... And he's sprinting as well. And he's heading our way. And, yeah, we're going to have to fire some torps off here. Yeah, so he's done a sprint, and now he's slowed down again so he can use his sonar properly. Now he's drifting. The Kreevac, okay, that's a Kreevac then, which is definitely an anti-submarine warfare ship. We're going to have to give these guys the good news. Which, mm, not massively happy about. and be bow on a little bit. So that that active sonar has less of a target to go off. Apparently the Grisha's is going the other way now. That's really interesting. No idea why I'd be doing that. But if the Kazbek is coming in, Five on the Kazbek. There he is. That's our target. Sverdlov is fairly close by, but we don't have a positive fix. We don't have a positive on the Kreevac. We do on the Kreevac, though. Yeah. Mm. Okay. How close is the Grisha? 4,000 yards. How close is the Kazbek? About 95. Yeah. 6,000 yards. Kreevac is 
here at this step I'm pretty safe. Maybe. We'll see. I could launch some torps now. Perfect or semi-perfect position for launching dumb torps. So I could just fire a, a spread of four or six out like that in that fan and they'd probably run right into them. Not necessarily so good for wire guided because I want them them wire guided torps to be right up their asses, right in their baffles. Let's watch that Grisha and see what he does. He's on another sprint. Is that because he's heading our way? He's 3,000 yards away. Oh no, no, he's not turning our way. He's got to have picked us up on that one, Jesus. Oh, definitely a Sverdlov then, eh? Wow. Wow indeed. So, hmm. The Grish is going to find us any time now, I swear. He can't not, he's only two and a half thousand yards away. He's slowing down. He's going to get torpedo, fuck him. We're going to have to. Get a torpedo. And you get a torpedo. And you get a torpedo. And so do you. Have they heard it? I don't know. Yeah, the Grisha looks like he's very well heard it. Grisha definitely knows we're here. Well, he doesn't know we're here necessarily. He knows that there is a torpedo heading his way. Right, let's get to guiding that torpedo. Yep, he's on him. Circle around and we'll all be good. Bugger it, I'll do it myself. Because he missed and then he picked up the Cree back instead. I mean, personally, why guiding this torpedo? Come on, come on, you can pick this guy up. There he is. Whack you on. Yes, there we go. Good night. Right, that's threat number one out of the way. Torpedo four, how are you doing? Yep, you're on the Krivak. Yeah, you're looking good. Oh, they've got to know the game's up now, but. That Krivak is the only one left that actually has any kind of anti-submarine capacity. Oop. That's me getting a little bit too close. Go on, get him. We lost the wire on one of them. That's okay though. I think I'll 
lost the Kree back here as well. Oh no, there he is. Where is that? I don't know. I can't tell what's going on. I just know the torpedoes are all good. Oh yeah, definitely. Lost the wire, but he's going down. Yeah, there goes Mr. Kree back. Torpedo yeah. two. You need to go for Mr. Svertlov, thank you very much. Okay, there goes the main target. Now you go away. We've still got the wire on you. You have other fish to fry. Go, go after Mr. Svertlov. So he makes his getaway. We are totally safe now. Let's speed up. No care for cavitating. Good. Good job that I remembered to just cancel that ballast, though, because, um, yeah. Yeah, that was a bad move. <laughs> If this torpedo doesn't do it, I might try harpooning him. He's got him, but it might not do it because it might run out of range. Nah, it's got him. Unless it suddenly runs out, it's got him. to me, four torpedoes, four hits. What more can anybody ask for? Looks like a Grisha, a Kreebak, a Kaspek, and a Spurdlov. Can't get much better than that. Oh, apparently it wasn't the target I was going for. But it'll do. Stand by for new orders. Oh, I've got a bronze star for not achieving my mission. Who knows? Nothing like a shiny scrap of metal. Oh, and apparently the Navy... Not the Navy. NATO warships and submarines are moving further north. Putting the pressure on the enemy. Excellent. Because we want to be fighting in their backyard, not our backyard. That's all for now, guys. Hope you found that interesting. My third attempt do a bleeding cold water video today. So I'm picking it up fairly slowly. Some of the Jive Turkey's videos are really helpful. He was actually a sonar operator on a Los Angeles class submarine so it's really interesting to watch him going through cold waters. It's very educational. So check him out if you get the opportunity. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.